Our third reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anyone ever given anyone directions to the church? Has this happened to you often? It happens to me all the time. You know, someone will ask what I do, and I'll tell them I'm a pastor, and they'll say, where? And I'll say, it's St. Andrews, that Presbyterian church on 12th Street by Wise Market. Anyone else have some sort of line? you got to say it quickly. So I remember one day giving this spiel to someone, and they thought about it for a second, and they said, oh, yeah, that's the church with the sinkhole. That was last year. Isn't it wonderful that they fixed that so well? We pray it holds. But my favorite was one day when someone asked me where the church is, and the young lady was at the bank, and she was the teller on the other side, and she looked thoughtful for a moment, and all of a sudden her face lit up. And she said, that's Brenna's church. And we said yes, and we had this wonderful moment of connection. I love it when it ends up being about people instead of street signs. And it reminded me of this old story I heard about a man who drove into town. And he stopped at the gas station and he asked someone over at the other pump if they lived around these parts. And he nodded and said, yeah, I've lived here all my life. Great, said the other man. I'm sure you can help me. Can you point me to the Presbyterian church? The man thought for a minute and he said, okay. I think I can help you. Down the road there on the right is the grocery store, and in there you'll find about half the choir doing their weekly shopping. Yeah. Anyone <laughs> shop there? About a mile up the road on the left is the library. And there's a book discussion going on this afternoon, so I'm sure there's a few Presbyterians there. And then, of course, all the schools in town have a few, and unfortunately there's some in the hospital, and there's even some working out in the fields. And the local man looked over, but the other man seemed a little confused. And he said, what? I thought you wanted to know where the church was, and, and the church is the people, right? Oh, um, yeah, he replied, but where's the church building? Oh, that, said the man. Just down the road, passed through the middle of the town on the left, great big cross, can't miss it. Anyone ever heard that before? No? Yeah, I couldn't figure out where I found it before either, but I remembered it because it gives such a great picture of the church in the community. So when people look for us, what do they see? What do they find? So today is Stewardship Sunday. I'm not going to talk about money. We did that for a couple of weeks. There's a lot of wonderful things that scripture says about money and resources. But today is a great day to talk about who we are and what we are called to do with all that we have and all that we are. And so to do that, I look to one of Jesus' biggest sermons, the Sermon on the Mount. And right there near the front, Jesus is speaking, and somehow he is speaking to both kinds of people in this audience. 
those who need to know that he's not throwing out the ancient Jewish traditions, but fulfilling the hope of them, and those who need to know that Jesus is speaking about real change that can be seen. So both of these things, how do we do the tradition and change, is what Jesus does as he calls them to be salt and light. He goes back calling, talking about how the people of God have been called to help preserve like salt all of these good things that god has brought into this world to preserve them and also to protect them from going bad but again and again throughout the different centuries god's people lost their focus and became more and more concerned about protecting and preserving themselves instead of god's good gifts for the world as that focus got lost, the salt was not as effective in preserving God's good gift. And it went bad, or it's lost its taste and its purpose. But here, as Jesus speaks to all of these people, he reclaims and upholds this important purpose, saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are the ones to protect and preserve what is good and what comes from God. And Jesus builds on that for those who need to know that something will change. And he says, you are the light of the world. When a light is lit, you don't hide it, but you find a place to let it shine as far as it can reach. It's Jesus called on them. Jesus calls on us now to be salt and light. I hope that you know that our time together in worship is very near to my heart. And I love the Reformed theology behind the way our worship service is structured. Because it's about all of us gathering together around God's word and bringing and taking out the light of Christ. And each week we gather from wherever we have been in the world, or even that morning, whether you woke up grumpy or slept through your alarm or woke up with energy, all of those things come as we come in. But each of us also brings a bit of the light of Christ. We symbolize that in our service as someone always comes down and lights the Christ candle that is usually there, but today it is there, reminding us that Christ's light is brought by all who come. Similarly, at the end, as we go out, we go out bearing and following the word and the light into the world. And so again, someone takes the candle and they light from it, they put out the Christ candle, and they carry that light before us out into the world. Sometimes I think of it like this big spiral, something like the Milky Way. There's all these little bits of light that come together, and they gather in, and it shines brightly, but then they go back out, and it scatters this light throughout all the world. The part we don't have to talk about much, but we know, is that there is a lot of darkness. There's a lot of darkness through this world, and it's not hard to see. But sometimes it's hard to see the light, or what is good, or what is hopeful or pulling us on. And this is what the light of Christ is to be in the midst of all the darkness and grief and sorrow and pain and uncertainty. An image that I look back and claim, although I had absolutely no theological thoughts at that point, was one evening my parents drove us up to the church because they were going to vote. And my sister and I were old enough to stay in the car, but not at home. And there at this church on the top of the hill that 
we didn't go to, we could see out in the midst of the darkness the most beautiful sight that I still remember of all of these lights shining in the darkness. The cars driving on the street with the lights on, the houses, the buildings, the street lights, and even the stars in the sky. As I look back on that, it is such a beautiful image of the church, of God's people in the world, with all of these beautiful dancing lights scattered even in the darkest night. Now, in the midst of that, we have to claim that there's some complexity. As we carry Christ's light, sometimes it's not clear to us how it's seen by others or received or how do we even know what happens if we feel like we've lost it. We remember the beginning of the Gospel of John that talks about how the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness did not understand it. Every once in a while, that's us too. Yet Jesus gave this parable in Matthew 13 called the parable of the sower. And it talks about someone who scattered seeds on rocky ground. And they quickly grew up and then they withered and died. Others were thrown on a path and the birds came and ate them up. And others fell where there were thorns that strangled them. But some fell on this good soil and they grew and they grew. I think bearing or scattering or being the light of Christ can be like that as well. We don't always know what happened and sometimes it feels like we tried to give this light and it was absorbed or sometimes it seems to dissipate. Sometimes it doesn't seem understood or Sometimes we might even try to hide it, worried that it might blind someone else. Thankfully, Rob did not blind us with his flashlight this morning. But sometimes, sometimes that light, even the bit that we carry, is received and shared, and it becomes this bright, brilliant light that gives glory to God as it reveals Christ's life and love and hope to those who see it and receive it. In this year's stewardship letter, Rob Lowry writes that I am asking you this year to believe, to believe in your dreams for St. Andrews. Jesus instructed his disciples to let your light shine before others. Jesus wants us to broadcast the hope that we find in God's love and to scatter light in words and actions. This next year, we are called to let the light of Christ shine brightly for this community and to let that shine far beyond it as well. We can build on the foundation of those who came before us and extend the reach of our congregation. We can inspire deeper faith among those who are here and invite others to join in the life of this church. We are a welcoming community of faith where Jesus Christ transforms lives and where the light of God shines for all to see. Indeed, this is something I want you to claim this day. Look around this room and realize that it's not abstract. Each person that you see bears a bit of that light of Christ. And as you look and see someone else looking at you, you can see that you also bear a bit of that light. It is a gift. It is an amazingly tremendous job, but yet you do it just by being one who is willing to reflect the light of Christ. May we see that in one another and claim it every place we go. 
whether to school or to work or in our own neighborhood, to the grocery store, the gas station, to parks and trails and restaurants and shops, in this community that needs to know hope and light instead of darkness and closings and failure. So may we see that bit of light shine so that we can know that we are those who are called and who do reflect the light of Christ. Today, as you bring your stewardship card forward, you're going to be invited for each family to light a candle. And I love that we are doing this today because Stewardship Sunday should be more about just our funds or what we bring in offering envelopes, but also claiming that we are Christ's church for God to send out and to use in whatever way the Spirit leads. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So as you go, you take this hope and this love and this light to community and world that needs it. So as St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, this day, as we consider our stewardship, I also hope that we go out and we are scattered all across this county and this state and this world, shining the very light of Christ. Now to the one who, hath, by the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen.